Hi, my name is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to get around the library module in Photoshop CC. <laughs> it's Lightroom we do, not Photoshop. Get it right! Hello. Is the library module. This is where all the photographs are stored and kept and we can move them around and things like that. It's really important to understand it. However, when we first open it, it can be pretty confusing about all the things. So I'm going to walk you through step by step what each thing does. I won't go into detail about how to do each thing, but I will show you exactly what it does. So let's jump straight into Lightroom and have a look. Okay, so here we are. This is what will happen when we're in the library module. We know we're in library because it says it in the top corner just here. So over, left hand side is about the catalog, about all of the images. Over this side on the right hand side is about specific images and what travels with the image, that data. And in the middle is a place for you to view your different images. Now, we're going to start from this side and move across. It's very simple. So up here we have the navigator. So we'll close everything down so that it's very simple. So the first thing up here, we'll open them as we go, is the navigator. This shows us the image that we are currently looking at. So if we scroll through these images, and we can just use the down or up arrow for that, and it will scroll or on a Mac or whatever, you can just use swipe. So you swipe down and you can select an image that you want to look at. So for example, let's look at this image that I did here. And this happens up here, the one that we're looking at. Now that's really helpful because down here is the film strip that has all the images. So we can swipe sideways across here that doesn't move this. However, if we, and if we swipe this, this doesn't move this one. So we can see that these work independently from each other. But if we click on an image, it then moves us to that area. Does that, which is very simple. So let's look at this one. This is the image that we're looking at. And if we want to see it larger, all we have to do is hit the space bar. And that's going to bring us in here. And if we press anywhere on the image, it's going to zoom in. And up here, it's going to show us exactly where we are. Drag this around and it's going to move us around the image or with a two finger movement on a Mac, that will do the same thing here. Click again, it brings out. If we want to go back to the grid view, all we need to do is press G. G for grid, space is going to bring us in. Okay, now another way to look at the images is what's called lights out. So that means that it takes away all of these side panels and everything like that and just disappears. So if we press L, that turns them down a little bit and L again makes everything black. However, we can still scroll through everything just as we would do before or click on something and also press space and make it larger. So now if I swipe to the side, I can move through my images however I want to go through them. And this is really great for when we want to just look at the image without any complications. Hit L again and it brings everything back. Now another way to help us look at everything is by pressing tab and the side panels disappear and shift tab, all the panels disappear. So that's another great way of doing it. And again, hit lights out and now everything looks fantastic. We can scroll through these images and see lots of really great stuff. Now. Shift tab will bring you back out and L back out of lights out. Okay, really simple. So the next thing down underneath navigator is catalog. Now what the catalog is, is the current catalog that you're in. You can have multiple Lightroom catalogs with, with images in them. I, you can do them year by year, project by project. It's completely up to you. I will make a tutorial about how to do that later. But this is where the catalog is. So this talks about in this current catalog, I have 23,425 images. That's a lot of images. I use this for one of my, uh, where I collate a lot of large images here. Okay, I have seven quick um, collections, which means that are sub collections that have helped me to kind of categorize things. And then it also just tells me my last import and stuff like that. So let's close the catalog one down. Now folders, 
Inside here, this is where we've imported all of the image to Lightroom. So when we import them, they go into folders. This here helps us see where those folders are. So for example, here I have in this catalog things on my Macintosh HD. So on my iMac, I have some of my images stored and I press the down button on the side and then these are all of the different folders which I have stored on this. If I just click click on any of these, like so, it takes me to that folder and shows me the images in that folder. Really simple. I can then click on another one and it will get rid of these ones and just open up the next one with again, all of these images just there for us to see. I also have some on some external hard drives. Now you can see actually, Two of these don't have a green light on the edge. That means that these images are in the collection, okay, in the in this um, catalog. However, those hard drives are not attached to my computer. So I can actually go down and I can actually see these as a question mark as you see, and I can select on this and I can still see the images, okay? So as, as I go through here, I can just click on one of these images and you can see the images. However, I can't actually make an edit or do anything with these images, but I do know that they are there and where I can go to find them. So that is my folders. The next thing is collections. So if you imagine all of your folders, you've got all of these different photo shoots that you've done, different ones, but you may have done, you may do but, um, headshots of people. Now, if you want to save your best headshots, you might want to put them all into one collection. So you're showing a client or your friends people's headshots, okay? Or you might do landscapes or you might do beach photos. Now, what you can do is create collections for those to sit inside, okay? So I'll show you with mine. I have one which is called Portfolio and I can actually click on this and it will open all the images in my portfolio, as we can see down at the bottom here. But I've also got them as subcategories. So advertisement looks like so. These are some of the advertisements that I've done. Okay, and then I can also go through to beauty shots. So these are all beauty images that I've photographed and I can scroll through and I can see these different images that I've shot for different clients. And if I keep going down, I can go through to my editorial section. So again, these are different images. I can go through to my headshots as I explained. That's a little bit aggressive. I don't mean it to be like that. And these are all, as you can see, just headshots. That's the only thing which is showing up inside this folder. So this is where all of my collections live, which is which for me is a huge, huge help. So I've got all of these here that I can go through. The final thing on the left-hand panel is publish services. So you can publish to Facebook, to Flickr, to all sorts of different things. I haven't got these set up because I don't actually use them at the moment, um, but you can do that. That. That's where that lives. Okay, now over to the other side. So that's basically left-hand side where everything is stored, right-hand side where information about the image itself. Okay, so at the top we have histogram, which shows what the histogram of the current image looks like, which is this, simple. The next thing is quick develop. So this is you can just boost the exposure up or down really quickly by using this, okay, if you want to. You can also go through and add on a preset that you've got saved or your white balance just here. You only have the option of selecting auto or a custom one. So we're just gonna leave all this for now. So that's just a quick develop. Personally, I don't use this. I always go to the develop module because I like to be very particular with what I do. That's where it is. Now the next thing, keywording. This is information that stays inside of Lightroom so that you can then go through and, and search for different things. So you can actually search. If you hit, um, oh, F is full screen. If you come into the grid mode, there's actually a box at the top here that you can search for things. So if I was to search for C in this one here, that's going to bring in different things that have C in it. And you can see that what it's brought up is things with the ocean in it. Very simple to do, and that just happened automatically. Now, that's your keyword, so you just type it in the box here, 
and that will do. I will make a tutorial on that. The next thing is your lists. So basically, you can have different lists of keywords that you can click and it will just add those to that. That's something very specific. Now the next thing is metadata or metadata. This is what when you export gets added to your photographs and it's really important to add the correct metadata to your image. So you can add a um, metadata preset. So I have some pre-built for Ed Gregory, my client, or my studio has one and different things like this. Um, you can then rename the file. Whatever you type in here, when you export, it will actually rename that file when it's saved, which is fantastic. And then you can add other things. You can add in copyrights. You can add in all sorts of different things down here. And then you can also see the different information for what happened on the image, okay? Really quite simple. And you can go to other images and search for things within that. And it gets very complicated how you search, but it's quite fantastic. I'll go through star ratings, flags, and all sorts of those things in another video. That's a basic overview for how to use the library. Now, if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Loads more videos coming. If you have any questions or thoughts, please write them in the comments. I will get back to you and um, I look forward to seeing you. Remember, you can go to the website photosincolor.com, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, all photos in color, and I wish you a great day. I'm having a great day so far. So this is Ed Gregory for Photos in Color signing out and here is the logo.